Okay, so let me here in closing give a couple of examples of some um, problems with some particular radioisotopes. First of all, iodine-131. Iodine-131 itself is a beta emitter. It has a half-life of eight days. And the problem with um, iodine-131 is that it is a fission product. Um, so it's going to, it, it, it is a product of of nuclear fission reactions, so it's found in a nuclear uh, fuel cells and then the waste nuclear fuel cells that are still stored on site. Um, it itself is water soluble and iodine is um, a micronutrient that is needed for hormones in your thyroid gland and so it collects iodine in your body. Once it's in your body it collects in the thyroid gland. So the problem is that if uh, iodine-131 accidentally gets into the um, environment, say from a nuclear power plant, it will, it will dissolve in water, so it can get in the groundwater, and then it can be, um, if you happen to drink the water or you eat something else that has drank the water and now has that uh, iodine in it, then you could uh, be exposed to this uh, iodine-131 and it will collect in your thyroid gland. Um, so. Um, in, in small amounts, uh, small amounts of iodine-131 can actually lead to thyroid cancer, whereas high concentrations of iodine-131 uh, uh, are actually used for medicinal uses to treat thyroid cancer, to treat thyroid cancer, okay? See, in the high doses, um, it, because it's a beta emitter, it will just uh, kill the tissue around it, and it, it will be just right in the thyroid. It doesn't penetrate very far. And since it's in the thyroid, it kills the thyroid tissue. It's actually a great uh, treatment for uh, thyroid cancer. But in small doses, it just does enough damage then uh, to the thyroid cells that could then lead to mutant cells, which then leads to cancer. And so people who have been exposed to iodine-131, for example, from nuclear accidents, for example, Chernobyl, have been shown to have a greater incidence of thyroid cancer. So it's a good and a bad thing. Um, and then radon-222, I promise I'd come back to that one. Radon-222 is an alpha emitter, and um, it has a half-life of only four days. Um, it's a noble gas. So what happens with radon-222, since it is a decay product of uranium-238, um, and uranium-238 has a half-life of uh, 4.6 billion years, um, although uranium is, is a very slow um, you know, uh, uh, decay process. So that's why we still, um, even though the Earth is, is so old, we still have uranium-238 around, which is constantly undergoing this uh, very slow radioactive process. Well, the, the problem is, is if a radon-222 happens to um, be produced and then seep out, once it's a gas, it can seep out of the ground. Um, and then if you happen to be uh, breathe in to your lungs, uranium-222, and it undergoes uh, radioactive decay, you can be bombarded inside your lungs with an alpha particle, which is going to do damage. Now, if it's not very much, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. But if you have a high concentration of it, it is a problem. And the other problem is once the radon-222 undergoes radioactive decay, you know, it keeps decaying um, down, down, down to polonium. Eventually, it can get to polonium-210, uh, which is a solid. So all the other decay products um, after uh, radon-222 are solid, so then that particular radioisotope is going to be stuck in your lungs, and it's going to continue to undergo radioactive decay. Polonium uh, is an alpha emitter um, as well, and it um, has a half-life of about 140 days. Okay, and so then it will further decay, further decay um, to other um, radioisotopes, which can then continue um, one radon-222 can give one alpha emission, but then the decay products further down the line can continue to emit both beta and alpha, uh, depending on what it is. So that's why it's a problem if it gets into your lungs and it undergoes decay before you have a chance to breathe it out of your lungs. Okay, and so it's found, um, uh, you know, obviously uh, from the U-38, which is in the crust of the earth. And so what has happened, people have found, is the radon-222 can collect in basements. Um, and the decay product, like I said, is a solid. So a lot of times people will have radon detectors in their homes if they have a basement. 
And if they have a high levels of radon, then they just have to install ventilation systems to keep circulating the air in, in their basements to make sure that the radon-222 passes right out of the basement. So anyway, that's just two examples of two radioisotopes, iodine-131 and radon-222, um, that can cause problems. And I think you can start seeing that nuclear waste um, can be a problem because uh, nuclear fuel pellets have uh, a large amount of uranium-238 and also a fission product is iodine-131, so those are just two examples of some of the problems um, with the um, leftover uh, fuel from spent uh, nuclear uh, fuel cells. So we'll talk more about that in the next video.